The question that we can ask ourselves from the readings today is the following. Do you seek the Lord Jesus with expectant faith? Because we have this beautiful example in the gospel of the leper. He had that expectant, hopeful faith in Jesus. No one who sought Jesus out was refused help. Even the untouchables and the outcasts of society found help in him. So Jesus did the unthinkable. He touched the leper and made him whole again. People in the time of Jesus ran away from lepers as it was a terrible, contagious disease. Lepers were driven out from their homes and their communities and left to fend for themselves. And so their physical condition was repugnant because their skin would rot, their limbs would fall away, and they had a terrible smell from this rottenness of, of flesh. And the Jewish law uh, forbade anyone from touching or approaching a leper. So this leper uh, is remarkable because he approached Jesus confidently and humbly, uh, expecting Jesus would heal him. Uh, Jesus not only grants the man's request, but he demonstrates a personal love, compassion, and tenderness of God in his physical touch. So Jesus met the man's misery with compassion and tender kindness. He touched the man and made him clean, not only physically, but also spiritually as well. So our churches and our society are filled with people who suffer spiritual leprosy from one kind or another. People fall into, who fall into terrible sins such as like overeating, alcoholism, drug abuse, gambling, addictions to TV, the iPhone, the internet, sexual promiscuity, pornography, impurity, gossip, and hatred. These sins enslave a soul, causing unhappiness and destruction. Only one person can cure the spiritual leprosy, and that is, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. If one finds oneself in this spiritual sickness, it's important to imitate the example of the leper when he knelt down before Jesus and he said, if you wish, you can heal me. It is kind of curious that this Jesus says this. He says, if you wish, it's almost like giving Jesus the option. But of course, Jesus always wants to go out to our encounter and he wants to always heal us and restore us, especially to spiritual health. So only God's grace can free us from years of self-hatred, self-destruction, and of, of a spiritual death. Only by God's grace, we will be no longer degraded by the tyranny of doing what feels good we will be experience that true freedom of the children of God. And we have this new lease of life because remember that when one is open to God's love, there is a newness of life. There is expectancy, there is hope, there is a new horizon. As you know, in the life of Saint Faustina, the Polish uh, nun, who died in the, uh, in the 1930s in Poland. Um, she was a mystic. And I think one of the revelations or one of the messages that Jesus gave her um, can also be tied in uh, to the uh, gospel reading today. 
because uh, among the other messages that Jesus gave his um, uh, sister Faustina, he says that even though a, a, a soul may be like a rotting corpse, full of rottenness, full of, say, um, we'll say decay, if that soul comes and has confidence in my mercy, then I will pour out my mercy, my life in that soul. And of course, this message gives us great hope because it's so important to be, to go forward, to hope in the Lord and also and never despair because we are living, as you know, in this culture which continually de attacks and degrades our faith, beats it into the ground. But the Lord is the master and author of life, of goodness and of peace, and he wants that for each one of us. Today is the 11th of February, which is also the anniversary of the apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes to St. Bernadette uh, way back in the 19th century. And Bernadette was a young asthmatic girl. Um, but she had, was very, very sickly. And of course, at one time when she went off uh, to go in search for um, some, some sticks for the fire, um, she had the experience, the apparition of our Blessed Mother. And then, it, of course, there was 18 apparitions of Our Lady. And Bernadette uh, was just this very humble, uh, pious girl who uh, wanted to complete with fidelity the call of Our Lady. On the ninth apparition, um, Our Lady ordered um, Bernadette to, let's say, dig uh, in the ground with her own hands uh, and discover or try and look for a stream. And so she did that. She kind of started poking away this, at the soil and sure enough, a spring sprouted out. And then Our Lady asked her to drink from that spring. And it took her three times, uh, like, you know, she found it at the first beginning that she didn't want to drink the water, but on the third uh, attempt, she drank the water. And so in that, when she went away from the apparition afterwards, the people laughed at her. They said, this little girl is a joke because, you know, she's down on her knees, her face is all dirty. And like, you know, this is kind of all cardiology. She has deceived us all. And so they all went home. They just said, it's all over now. And the miraculous occurred like right a few hours later because there were people who went there with faith. And when everyone went home, that spring started pouring out loads of water. And there was a people there. There was one a woman who went there she had a terrible, like, uh, we we'll say, condition in her elbow that was like a seized or a frozen shoulder. And she bathed her um, arm in the waters and she was miraculously cured. Then there was another person whose uh, uh, baby was terribly ill, bathed the baby in the waters, was miraculously cured. And so uh, began a whole succession of miraculous cures. Um, from people who came with faith in our Blessed Mother. And so this indicates to us that not only the physical healing comes about, but also the most important, especially in these times, is that inner healing of the soul. Because it is so important to remember that we have to be, um, have God in our lives. We have to communicate with him. We have to make that effort every day. That's why the gospel is always, that has to be always challenging us. If it's not challenging us, it means that we are spiritually asleep. And that's not good. So it is important for us to always ask Our Lady, what does she want of, our, uh, of us in our lives? 
How can we respond better? How can we overcome sin? How can we be truly virtuous and holy and upright as God's children? That is the essential ingredient of life, and that is what brings us true freedom of heart, true joy, and true peace. And that's what's missing in the world right now. So we ask the Lord Jesus and his Holy Mother Mary that they may come to our assistance, that they may help us, that they may cure us of any ill health of mind, body, or soul. Amen.